grab a cup of coffee and start your day with Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life features stories to inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Visit CYACYL.com. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Each one of us faces a choice point in our lives, a life event or a crisis that becomes an opportunity for change. Faced with a challenge, we can choose a path that may lead towards serving the greater good on a large scale. Such a choice can dramatically increase our satisfaction with our own lives. According to today's guest, Harry Massey, the term choice point indicates a place of branching or forking, a point of possibility, the point of transformation. Our lives are constantly creating choice points. Crises can either be devastating or transformational, depending on what you're able to learn from them. Harry is a writer, director, and entrepreneur. He directed the full-length documentary film Choice Point and co-wrote the companion book. He also founded the Choice Point Foundation. Harry was also executive producer and co-writer of the best-selling documentary DVD, The Living Matrix, A New Science of Healing. Welcome, Harry. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Jane. It's, it's great to be here. Harry, in the introduction, I stated that each one of us faces a choice point in our lives. Is a choice point always a major shift that impacts us or the world on a grand scale, or can it be the little choices that we make every day? Choice points work at every single scale, and you know, if you look at your life, like you might have some really big crisis that happens that, that actually makes you examine what your purpose is and you, you change your whole life direction. But, but equally, just you know, in, 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 in everyday life, it can be a very small thing. You know, it could, could just be road rage in the, in the car and you just, you, know, you just choose to be a bit calmer and that, and that affects the rest of your day in a, in a nicer way. So you know, choice points are, you know, are, are at every scale. Well, the interesting thing, uh, you know, I love when Einstein said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. And often, events and situations repeat in our lives and in the world until we make different choices. So how can we find that inner strength to make the type of choices that are required in order to make a dramatic shift in our life? I think it really sort of comes down to a sort of a three-part process. Um, and the Sort of the, the first thing you do if, if you're in a crisis is try and understand your world. So, so you, you would take a step back, you know, start start asking yourself, um, you know, questions about, you know, what what are your interests, what are your skills, and, and from that you can basically build up a, a a pattern of the world around you so that you can make better choices. To stop at that point, understanding your world. We live in these little cocoons, and, and so many of us are ignorant to what's actually going on around us. So why is it so important that we have a good understanding of our surroundings? I think it's incredibly important, and I, I think a, lo a lot of our, I guess a, lo a lot of our attitude you know, comes from a lot, you know, you, we, we all read a lot of books about the power of force and the law of attraction and how if we work harder or try harder we can get more results and all that type of stuff. So you know, we, we become very egocentric from that, from that type of thinking. But in reality, there's all of these incredibly complex patterns going on all around us that are, that are actually far bigger than ourselves. You know, whether they're big, big economic patterns, or um, I don't know, or you know, one one's happening in the internet through social media or environmental things, and the, you know, there's, there's there's all of these there's all of these other type of cycles and patterns going on around, and and just through observing what those patterns are and trying to research, trying to trying to work out where those patterns are going, if we can then work that out and then align our own purposes, i.e. align our actions and directions with where other patterns are going, you know, we, we can make so much better choices for our own life that those patterns end up helping scale your own life and you know, take you much further, but it also enables you to, make, uh, you know, to have a much bigger impact on the world around you too. Um, so you know, I, think, I think it's really, really important to, to understand your world. And you started to discuss aligning your purpose, and I think that that's very scary to people. First, they may not know what it is that they are supposed to be doing, and then to actually follow that path sometimes requires tremendous change, which 
really scares people. Sometimes there's a high price to that. So what do you recommend to someone to eliminate that fear in order to align themselves with their purpose? It is an interesting one, and you, you, know, you definitely have to have courage to change. But really, the other way of looking at it is, is sort of the complete opposite. You know, what, what, what's the cost or the price of, of not changing? Because you know, if you're not happy with, with what you're doing or, with, you know, or you haven't really found your purpose and you know, you're a bit depressed and bored and, and all the rest of it, that's not a particularly fulfilling life anyway. And if you carry on, as you said earlier, you know, if, if you make the same choices over and over again, um, you end up with the same, with the same results. And that's not particularly, particularly great for your own life. Whereas if you dare to do something different, um, you can have such a much greater result. And you know, that's, that's generally always worth the risk. Harry, I love the way you said that, the cost of not doing it. And I don't think that we actually look at things like that. We're always saying something like, well, if I do it, this is what it'll cost. But I think making that shift and saying, well, what will it cost me if I don't do it? I think that's a wonderful way to look at it. And, well, I mean, here, here's the thing. The world is always changing and people are always changing around you. And if you, if you don't try and change with them, you end up getting left behind and it is, you know, it's far worse for you than, than actually changing. So you, sh- you should be afraid to not change is how I would put it. Harry, we've been talking about the choice point principles of understanding your world, aligning your purpose. What is the last thing that you recommend? The last one, I guess, is the famous Gandhi one of being the change. So once you've understood where patterns are and you've, and you've sort of defined and aligned your purpose and you know where you're going, um, there's all sorts of little obstacles and little blocks that can get away. And you know, one of them you just talked about, you know, which is courage, like you might have that block to actually take action. or you know, there might, There's all, all these little things that go on and go in your head, all the buts and ifs and what ifs and all that type of stuff um and you know and being being the change is the step of actually of actually being you know what you want your purpose to be and doing it so a very important step one of my favorite songs is the michael jackson song man in the mirror because it talks about looking at oneself and making the change i mean because all we can really control is ourselves and i think it's really important that we do look in the mirror look at ourselves and as you say be the change that we want Absolutely. I mean, it's totally and utterly crucial. But I would say that actual step of being the change is more well known than perhaps the step of aligning your purpose. And if we look at Gandhi, for example, you know, he's, he's so famous for being the change. But actually, how did he manage to, to, to get you know, most of the world behind him and then get the British out of India was actually because he had an extraordinarily strong purpose that everyone got behind so that being the change could happen. And it was, it was, I, I, you know, I think in Gandhi's case, the, the purpose stuff was you know, as strong, if not stronger, than, the, than what he's more famously known for in, in being the change. Harry, what do we do when our intentions are good? I mean, for example, look what just happened in Newtown, Connecticut. We've lived through a, a horrific shooting event there, and for a moment we're outraged, and we all want to make all these changes in the world, and then something happens and we become more apathetic. What is it that we can do to light the fire to impassion people? Well, I, I think people light the fire in them, in you know, in, in themselves really. So you know, if, if if you are apathetic or not happy or bits and bobs, you know, just just take a step back, and you know, re- really think to yourself, well, what could I do that's both going to improve my own life and you know, and make a difference? And and it, it's quite. You know, it's relatively simple to do that. You can like look at your interests, look at your skills, look at what, what your passions are, and then see how that fits into the into the wider world patterns. And you know, as you as you make a match between the wider world patterns and your and, and your own skills and interests, then then you can align your purpose. What can we do per se? Um, I think yours just to have to be a you know to try and be as much of an example of you know of what you're saying as you can and. Um, keep doing what you're doing and you know, don't be put off by it. You know, there, there's always horrible things going on in the world and, and around us. Um, but there's also incredibly amazing things and amazing people doing doing amazing things. And, you know, I don't, we, we all have the choice to, to focus on, on what's positive or, or what's on, or, you know, what's negative and um, try and switch more of your attention to, to what's positive because, you know, although, although the mass you know, we've got amazing mass media and TV and internet, so we can know all these things instantly. But a hundred years ago, and there wasn't, there was still murders and wars and all sorts of things going on. There was a thousand years and two hundred years, and there probably will be in fifty years time from now. And that, that you know, that that won't change. But but equally, there's all of the saints and amazing, <laughs> amazing people doing amazing things too. 
So don't, don't, don't get caught up on it, that's what I would say. Harry, we need to take a break for this week's Good Life Tips. Stay with us for information to help you make the positive life changes that we talk about on the show. Welcome back to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman, and our guest today is Harry Massey, director of the documentary film Choice Point and author of the companion book. Harry, for your project Choice Point, for the DVD and the book, you had the opportunity to work with some really amazing people, change leaders, and what would you say were some of the stories that struck you the most? There were a few, really. I really liked Brett. Now, he, he was actually an arm robber crack addict, um, sort of brought up in a, well, actually being an arm robber crack addict is enough. <laughs> um, he, 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 he went to jail a couple of times, and he did a, he did a drug deal in jail, and all of this is in the, in the film Choice Point. Um, and, he, and he was, um, I think a police officer was coming into the prison library where he was hiding some heroin at the time, and um, so he hid his heroin behind a, behind a, book um and then this book fell out onto the floor and it was i think it was a guide to mindfulness by fitch fat Farn. i can't pronounce his name mm-hmm. and um yeah anyway so he picked it up and he, he started reading it back in his cell and that book totally and utterly changed his life and it, it took him a few you know four or five years to sort of get his mind around there um but you know now now he's just this amazing you know amazingly charismatic um you know amazing sort of you know, he helps all these other drug addicts get off and you know other other prisoners and he's got amazing relationship with his daughter and I, that, that that's that's a really magical um that's a really magical story um richard branson is also much more famous and well known but you know a few things that we probably don't really realize about him is he actually started his life with his own choice point where he really cared about the issues going on in vietnam and he you know, wanted to write it all up in the student magazine, and his headmaster didn't want him to do it. And you know, his headmaster said, "Well, you can either do this, the school or the magazine." And he and he chose to do the magazine. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a for profit business or, or anything like that. It was just a you know a student magazine. And and he he left school because he he so believed in his purpose right then, and that led into him selling records through that magazine, which led to Virgin Music, to airlines, to going off into space and all the rest of the um, but you know he's uh, and, uh, you know his his story is in the in the film which is a pretty you know very incredible story um i don't know there's there's quite a few quite a few amazing ones in there well also you say that no one's too young to make a difference and you shared a story about an 11 year old boy named burke what was the story about burke burke i think when he was six or seven always wanted to be a wanted to be a basketball player and um, one day he was like wandering around the supermarket with his mum and he was like picking all these things off the shelf and he's going, Mum, what I saw Pamay fructose and you know, all these weird ingredients he didn't know what they were. And his mum didn't have a clue. So he so he went back home, looked them up on the internet and started getting more and more horrified and you know, like like a like a kid is with their parents, started pestering their parents to not buy all this food with um all these you know horrible ingredients so he converted his family to sort of local organic organic food and then and then beyond and he got so passionate about it you know he ended up i think yeah there was a local a local tedx um uh you know was was in town and so he so he thought oh i'm gonna go and talk about it and you know it wasn't his mum putting him up to it so he he went he went and talked to this local tedx and that ended up on youtube and you know, got hundreds of thousands of, of views and now now he goes all around the world um talking on local you know local farming and uh you know and against all the monsantos and this and that and you know he's he's an 11 year old kid totally and utterly aligned with his purpose which you know he totally chose and has come from his own volition i guess but so we have no um, excuses <laughs> yeah we've got no no excuses and it's not you know and his parents weren't weren't hippie green people or anything like that not at all like it was it was he who converted his family so you know, it's just that, that's a beautiful story harry what was your choice point um uh, what was my choice point uh, which one <laughs> I'll, tell you one, mate. I'll tell you a big one I had. <laughs> but you know what harry that's a great point because you've had so many and when you've come to each one what did you do did you realize that that this was a defining moment in your life um, well, I'd, I'll tell you my major one. I mean, when, when I was 21, um, I got really ill with chronic fatigue syndrome, where, and I ended up um, like bedridden in bed for I can't, I can't remember. It was like seven or eight years, and it was a pretty pretty horrific time. Wow. I went right through the medical uh, sort of normal stuff, and I was 
on drips and you know I was having blood taken every day. Oh, it was a pretty dreadful time. And um, after a few years of really being totally disabled um, and not really getting anywhere through the sort of practitioner type type model, um, I just thought I thought well I just thought there's got to be a better way. And I, and I it was a crazy idea. And I just thought to myself, wouldn't it be amazing if there was a home wellness system so people like me at home could work out what was wrong with them, but then also get the knowledge uh, to get themselves better so we didn't have to go from doctor to doctor and pay out all this money and, you know, all that type of stuff. And I just had that idea, and I just thought to myself, well, no one's doing it. I'm going to try and do it, even though I'm ill in bed and, you know, I've only got about an hour or two of sort of vague thinking time, like a day, because, you know, you're so out of it, you can't really think properly. But, you know, you your brain ticks over a bit and you can have a laptop on your lap in bed mm-hmm. so from that from that I um I, it's a bit of a long story but yeah and I ended up I ended up meeting these amazing scientists through the internet through you know through email exchanges and we ended anyway I ended up making this um making this health system which has treated hundreds of thousands of people over the last 10 years and ended up doing really well and um but you know I think my my choice point there was I think before I'd been, I, I was sort of in this victim mentality of well, trying to get my, and trying to get myself well, and it was all me, I guess, you know, me, I want to get better. And as soon as I flipped it round to thinking, well, let's make a system that will help get lots of people better, as well as myself, of course, um, then I ended up getting the knowledge and support that got that got me well and, you know, and, and create this business out of it. And so, you know, that's the most significant changing point in, in my life and obviously on a business journey and making films and all this you get you get all sorts of other ones but uh, I, yeah that's the most significant but i mean that's a great illustration because it, it it shows it beautifully you're at that point in your life you could have gone down the victim road and spent the rest of your life miserable and in bed or you can take your situation and find some good in it and figure out how to make it into your life journey. And look what happened. And that's what I really want our listeners to understand. As you're saying, you have these decisions, these forks in the road constantly in our lives. And it's what we do when we get to that fork. As you say, it's our choice point. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, crises can actually be wonderful things because you know, if, if you look at them the right way, they can they totally lead to, you know, they lead... Well, not even if you don't, they, they, you know, they always precede transformation and, and, and innovation and, and change. You know, because if you're in a crisis, what happens after the crisis? You know, you, you either learn the, you know, you either learn a lot from the crisis, or, you know, unfortunately, if you don't, your life can, your life can get very, very bad. Right. But you know, that that doesn't that doesn't happen to most of us. Mo- you know, most of us when we get a, you know, get into a really bad shape, you know, we, you know, we generally do sit up and go, oh, what's this about? And you know, and and so I don't, I don't know if it's the right word to say enjoy the crisis, but mm-hmm. at least you know at least savor it and you know look 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 at it for what it is. It, it precedes something better coming generally. Um, and you know, right in the crisis, you don't generally know what it is, but you know, but it is the time to start figuring it out. Harry, where can our listeners go to get more information about you, your DVD, and your work? The well, the main the main one is choicepointmovie.com. Um, and if you go there, yeah, you can you can watch the movie, and there's like, I think there's a free ebook and other little videos for free and all that type of stuff. And as always, our listeners can visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, listen to past shows as podcasts, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, take part in our book club, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Harry, in about 30 seconds or less, what is the one thing that you really want our listeners to walk away with from this interview? Um, I didn't say anything about the film, really, but, I mean, the, the film is called Choice Point, Align Your Purpose, and it's not just a film. It's, all, it's, it's also got a whole social network built in where, where there's, l- there's, like, tens of thousands of people in there putting out all these great ideas and exchanging ideas to, to connect each other to, to help change happen. So, you know, I, I really recommend please go to the go to the site, Choice Point Movie, um, watch the movie, join the social network. It's all free. Check it out. Have fun. Harry, thank you for spending time with us today and for reminding us about the possibilities that we have when we get to that fork in the road and we make our choice point. So thank you for being here. Cool. No, thank you very much. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.